would you run an unknown chemical? How would you run a chemical reaction? So I was watching the news a couple of months ago, and it showed uh, breaking news. It happened in Kansas at a bourbon plant, where the news, all it showed was the, a white cloud engulfing a town. Coming out of an industrial facility. Right. And right. so my wife, who is not a hazmat technician, said, Joe, how would you run that on, on using the hazmat IQ system? So I said, well, it's a red one. So let's, let's walk through the process and show how I got to red one, and, and then we'll walk through what happens next. So when you use the charts, um, what, do you, what do you do? You go to above the line, below the line, size up, and this one is two chemicals were mixed uh, inadvertently. So you get toned out, and it comes in chemical reaction, maybe odor call, cloud maybe a cloud, a cloud, maybe a cloud at an industrial site. And, you know, as you're responding, it says that the truck driver just reported that he put sulfuric acid in the sodium hypochlorite container by mistake. It reacted and off-gassed. That's a lot of information, but what does that do to you? Okay, so we'd call this a red one. Now, why is it a red one? Because when you go to chart two, all the elements are listed in alphabetical order. When I look at the cloud, the word cloud is not there. The word odor is not there. The word chemical reaction is not there. The word rollover is not there. Leak is not there. So whenever the word is not there, and the answer is no. And the arrow that says that no inside takes you to what standard operating guideline? Chemicals can only be in two places on the periodic chart. It's either above the line or below the line. This is above the line till proven differently, till we get more information. Now, what's above the line? As we're all responding, we're all on the same play. All units responding to the bourbon industrial plant, we're going above the line. What does that mean? It's a gas. The initial hot zone before meters get there is 300 feet. It's vapors that are toxic, that are heavier than air in parts per million. Those vapors are flammable. So they're measured in LEL. They have carbon and hydrogen. They're toxic. They're corrosive. They have fluorine in it. The pH paper goes red. The F paper goes yellow. You don't have to remember all that. Everything above the line, that's the standard operating guideline. That's why those charts that you have are laminated to keep with you on the rig when you respond. So it's the last bullet and above the line says go to chart three. You chart three, and remember, you start in the upper left corner in the flammable clue box, and all the things Chris said, unknown, cloud, odor, it's not there. You go to the middle box, it's, it's, it's not there, so you go to a red one. What does red one mean? Red one means maintain your above the line, all hazard approach. Yeah, but listen, look what it says in red one. It's an unknown, but you know the hazards. It's all hazards. Right, and you know the meters. It's all meters, and you know how to dress. Your lures in turnout gear and SCBA if it's flammable, which is the highest so, hazard. So, Chris, we just got a report from dispatch that sulfuric acid mixed with sodium hypochlorite. Now, Mr. Professor over here may know what that means, but for the rest of the world, hell, I don't know what that makes. So what are we going to do on this unknown? It's going to stay above the line. We can't go to the book to verify hazards. It's not in the book. So we have to equip ourselves with meters, head into towards that cloud. So we bring our rad meter. You tell me the hazards of this cloud. Uh, I rad meter, my background was 12 micro R per hour. I approach the cloud, it's still 12 micro R per hour. No Is radiation. It it's not Good. radioactive. On my mask, I have pH paper and fluorine paper. pH paper turns red. What does that tell me about that cloud? That, uh, this is an acid cloud. Okay, the command post, Chris, wants to know, what do we do with all these people that are in their houses where the cloud is now? Because yeah. if you get them out of their house, they got to walk through the cloud. Right. So it's either shelter in place or make them walk through a corrosive gas cloud. Right. So, so we, can, uh, we can argue all day, but a lot of departments are understaffed. So you don't have the ability to evacuate. Where are you going to put them? The police department doesn't have SCBA. How are you going to get them there, man? We're going to put them, you're going to shelter in place. Corrosive cloud. You don't want them to walk through a corrosive right. we're gonna, cloud. And we're going to shelter in place. So we sheltered. That's what they did also. They sheltered in place in Kansas here. About two hours into this incident, the chemical reaction stopped, the cloud dissipated, and the people, the shelter in place order was released. So, so let's go back to where we were. As we're approaching that cloud, pH paper red, corrosive gas with acid, the pink, the pH, the F paper, sorry, did not change. It remained pink. So that corrosive gas had no fluorine. That reaction in the air says it's a corrosive gas. So 
I'm somewhere probably, this is what I'm thinking, I'm somewhere on chart three in the middle box. Which is great news because the middle box is most likely not going to be flammable. But we're going to figure that out right now. And it doesn't have fluorine in it because the F paper didn't go yellow. So I take my LEO meter. As I approach the cloud, 0% of the LEO, 0% of the LEO, 0% of the LEO. It's not flammable. Good. Next, I bring my PID. Uh, first of all, let's talk temp gun for a second. When, you, when you're approaching a cloud and the chemical reaction is five blocks away. There's no you, temperature you, reaction. You can't use the temperature no. gun to shoot the cloud. you got to shoot the, the gun at the reaction. happening at the bourbon right, plant. Right, So, LEL in that cloud, though, if that was a flammable gas, we would get LEL reading. No flammable gas, zero parts per million on my PID, zero on my FID. Now, why does it say zero on the FID? Because it doesn't have carbon and hydrogen. Well, does that mean that since we got no readings on PID and FID, oh, it's not toxic, man, drop your mask. No, it Remember, just, it's chemical I, ionizes above 10.6. When you get pH paper red, is that toxic through inhalation? Right? It's all, when you get a corrosive gas in the air, if you breathe it in, can it kill you? And the answer is yes. So you got to keep your mask on. So now, of course, um, so we, we have, what are you going to wear on this call, first of all? If it's a red one, what would you wear? On a red one, red is, one. to make a rescue or to, or to plug a leak? Well, you're doing a recon mission. I'm going to wear turn out gear and sure, SCBA to my PHP. Sure, because we don't paper. know what the hazards are, but most likely it's going to be flammable. That's the way I treat it. But if I walk up to that and it turns pH red, do, does it mean I want to march right through that cloud? No. In turn out gear? No. If I need to go into that cloud and I know I got pH red and no LEL, I'm wearing, a, I'm wearing level A. That's a level A call all day, every day. Uh, here's we, where it gets hairy. Here's where it gets hairy. It gets hairy where the driver is, is yelling. He's alive. He's not unconscious. And, of course, he's got an acid gas on his skin and he's inhaling it. He don't have long to live if, so if somebody don't give him a chance to survive. So pH paper turns red on your mask. You're in turnout gear and hmm. SCBA. F paper does not turn to yellow, so it's not fluorinated. You got a driver half a football field away. Yeah. What chapter is that in in the book? Right. What chapter is that? So this so you got to make a decision. Right. Because you I'm, know you're not in the right PPE when you're, you're in a corrosive gas. But if you wait for the level A... That guy's dead. So what I would do, Chris, I'd look to see, hey, which way is the flag blowing? Right. If the wind's blowing that way, I'm going to approach over there. Another thing I'm going to do to try to make it as safe as possible, if me and you are making a, a rescue there, I'm bringing a hand line. Yes. And that hand line's going to do one of two things to that cloud. I'm either going to ventilate by using like air, like hydraulic ventilation. Or I'm going to blanket it with water and knock it down. It's either. always going to make it better though, right? Yes, always. And, and I get right up to the driver. My pH paper on my mask changes right where the driver is. What do you do? Run, run out of there? I'm in the wrong PPE. No, you make the quick rescue, get them out. We're not checking pulses. We're not putting cervical collars on them. Quick in, quick out, decon. We do it every day, man. It's called a primary search on a three in the morning on a single family residence where you find someone even though it's fully involved on one end. You, you, you risk a lot for what? For a life. Right, only. You don't Not go in there just to screw around. Not for plumbing. Hey, Chris, my, my Freon meter, when I went into that cloud, went tick, 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 tick. That's the most valuable instrument because it just gave me a bunch of information. It told me that that instrument only ticks when the in the air is a fluorine or what we call a, a halogen freon. A freon. or a freon. freon. Go so to chart the... number one and look at element number nine. That either has free fluorine, which it doesn't have because Joe's F paper didn't turn yellow. It, but the pH paper turns red, so it's probably most likely chlorine. It's got to be chlorine. Right, because bromine, bromine is a liquid. And what's the, yeah. So and that, iodine is a solid. So it's a gas in the air, so we're guessing chlorine. Now, what, what does that do for us? If we went to the book to look up, look up chlorine, you know what it would say? It's a corrosive gas that's not flammable. Well, heck, we knew that 10 minutes ago. But it's a chemical reaction that you can't shut the valve off, so you shelter in place until the chemical reaction stops, you walk around with your Freon meter or a chlorine single gas sensor or a pH paper, and when you don't get increased temperature, uh, you don't get pH paper change, you don't get increased tick rate on your Freon, and your chlorine remains zero, you lift the shelter in place, and everything's just fine. Now, class and, 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 um, and Joe, I'm asking, why am I doing this? Why am I playing a chess game where I'm three steps ahead of where we're at now? The chlorine's molecular weight is 70. Why do I want to know that? Because where am I going to take these young firefighters and I'm going to tell them to measure where? Because let's say that in this place in Kansas, they got uh, tornado uh, underground homes. 
I want and everyone to go down to every tornado underground home or basement to check. And I'm going to get a, if I have a chlorine sensor on my combustible gas instrument where I can exchange toxic sensors, I'm going to put a chlorine sensor in and I'm going to measure for chlorine because the IDLH of chlorine is 10 parts per million. You can't use a PID. Nope. So you can't measure 10 parts per million. No, nope, because PID. chlorine ionizes at 11.4. So that's the beauty of the multi-ray. The multi-ray has plug and play sensor capability that you can take a chlorine sensor on the scene, stick it into one of your toxic sensors, take out CO and put in chlorine, and now you've got a chlorine sensor. Here. So look at the instruments we use on this call. A chlorine sensor, pH paper, and a halogen meter, a freon meter. Okay, that's a pretty cool call. Uh, an unbelievable cloud was formed in this town. I mean, we'd freak out if we got called on that one, and the whole town is under this white cloud that looked like a fog. So if we can handle that call, you guys, we can handle any call. But remember, use the system, know your red lights, and get out if it's not a line of sight rescue. So remember what the goal is of the class. The goal of the class is that we can do our work, but that at the end of our shift, be it around the clock, around the block, or anywhere around the world, we go where? Back home to our family. All right, so that's this month's Chemical of the Month. I'm Joe. I'm Chris. We're signing off. Take care. Peace.